With this chapter, we begin our study of relations. In section 3.1, we make some general comments about relations. And in later sections, we'll talk about specific kinds of relations, known as equivalence relations and partial orders. In part 1, we introduce the definition of a relation, and we also talk about a specific relation known as the identity relation. Relations are defined in terms of Cartesian products, so let's recall the definition. If A and B are any two sets, we define their Cartesian product to be the set of all ordered pairs AB, such that A is an element of set A and B is an element of set B. Remember we studied these back in section 2.2. Now we introduce the main definition of this section, the working definition of the term relation. If A and B are any two sets, then any subset of the Cartesian product A cross B is referred to as a relation from A to B. We'll use different kinds of letters to refer to relations. We'll typically use letters like capital R or capital S or capital T to be the name of a relation, and if the ordered pair AB is an element of the relation, we have various ways of expressing that. We can also use this notation, and we can say that in words as A is R related to B, or just simply A is related to B if there's no confusion, if we're certain that we're referring to a particular relation named R. The main point to realize is that a relation, R, is a collection of ordered pairs um, from A cross B. It will often be the case that set A and set B are the same, um, and in that case if we have a relation from A to A, we just simply refer to that as a relation on A. So let's look at a few examples of relations. So here we have a, a, um, a set of ordered pairs. Each of the ordered pairs is an element of n cross n, and so this is a relation on n. Here we have an example of a, a relation which we call S. It's a set of ordered pairs in R cross R, and so it's a relation on R. And uh, an ordered pair x, y is in that relation, provided the components satisfy this particular equation. Now we can define what we mean by the domain of a relation and the range of a relation. Of a relation. Uh, but before I go into the formal definition, let's look at an example. The, um, for this particular example here, the domain is just simply the set of all the first elements that you see in the ordered pairs. So it's 1, 2, 3, and 5 for the first um, example. And the range is the set of all second elements that appear, 5, 2, 7, and 4. 2 has already been mentioned. So there you see what the range of the second example is. For the example S, the set of all first elements is all of R, so there you see the domain of S is all of R, and what is the range? What are the set of all second elements? Well, the second elements are of the form something squared plus 3. Since something squared is always at least 0, the y values must be um, greater than or equal to 3, and so the range would be the entire interval, the um, real interval, from 3 to infinity. But in the um, definitions up here, I give a more formal treatment of what the domain is. So if you write down actually what we're doing, if you analyze what we've just done, um, this is the formal definition of the, the domain of um, a general relation from A to B. It's the set of all x in the first set A, such that there exists a y in B, such that the ordered pair x, y lies in the relation. And the range 
is the set of all y in B such that there exists an x in A such that x, y is in the relation. Those are the real working definitions of domain and range of a relation. And finally, we define what is meant by the identity relation on a set. We let A be any set. Then the identity relation on A is denoted by I sub A. And it's given by this definition here. It's the set of all x, y in A cross A such that x is equal to y. Or equivalently, we could write it as the set of all ordered pairs of the form x comma x in A cross A as x varies over the set A. Let's look at a couple of examples of that. Here are two sets A. If A is given by this set, then what is the identity relation? It's the set of all things of this form. And so that looks like this. It's the set of all ordered pairs in which both components are exactly the same. And what is the identity relation on the set of real numbers? It's the set of all ordered pairs of the form x comma x as x varies over r. Now why we refer to this relation I sub A as the identity relation on A isn't clear at this particular point. But it shares some properties in common with what we call the identity element of the real numbers, the number 1. Um, the number 1 has the property that when you multiply it by any real number, you get back the same real number. So in a similar way, we'll see that the identity element, um, when we take the composition of it uh, with any other relation, we get back the same relation. So we'll, we'll see that when we define more formally what we mean by the composition of two relations.